Hello, my name is Amber, and today I will be talking to you about the acquired immune system. I will be giving a brief introductory overview about what it is and how it works, all with the goal of understanding the importance of vaccinations against infectious disease. I am assuming some, but not all, of you have heard the term immune system before, that you have no prior understanding of immunological terms and that you may or may not have received vaccinations at some point in your life. Let's say you're walking through town one day and you pass a random man on the street. What would you do? Would he spark any reaction in you at all? Or would you just keep walking by? Now let's say earlier that day, or even earlier that week or month, you had seen a news report splashed across every TV station and website with this particular man's face stating that he was a serial killer who murders anywhere between 3,000 and 49,000 people in any given year. Now what would you do if you passed him on the street? Would you still walk by him without doing anything? No, not at all. You would pull out your cell phone and call the cops. Or maybe get together with the local mob that was forming and grab a baseball bat. But you wouldn't just walk past him without saying a word. You would sound the alarm. You would attack because you recognized him as a threat to the safety of your health and to your life, as well as to the health and life of those you love. This is exactly what is happening when we talk about your acquired immune system. Some of you may not have heard the term immune system before. If you haven't, our immune system is what protects us from invading bacteria and viruses that would make us sick. It includes parts we are born with, like our skin and other organs, as well as tissues and specialized cells that all work together. When we add the word acquired to our immune system, now we are talking about our immune system learning how to fight off bacteria or viruses, otherwise known as antigens or substances that are foreign to our bodies, and remembering that bacteria or virus in case it is ever seen again. Let's break down the earlier scene about a newscast in Mass Murderer and use it to understand how our bodies learn to fight antigens, or foreign substances, they have never seen up close and personal before. First, a special group of people creates a message that describes our bad guy and gives the message to the newscaster. The newscaster then goes live with the information. He or she puts out a report that lets everyone know who they should be looking for. In a sense, the newscaster targets the bad guy with these reports. It is important to note that these reports match only one particular bad guy. They are a physical description of one person. It is also important to note that these reports stay with us in our memories. We do not forget the physical description. Next, after seeing the newscast, you keep those reports detailing what this particular bad guy looks like in your memory, and you use them. If you happen to see our bad guy on the street, you call the cops to come get him. So how exactly does this equate to an acquired or learned immune system? Well first, there are special cells, which we will not learn about in this lesson, that recognize when an antigen invades our body and enters our bloodstream. They deliver a message to another special cell when this happens, the B cell. B cells are a type of white blood cell and they act as our newscaster. In other words, they create a physical description of the antigen called antibodies, which latch onto and target our bad guy. Just like the reports given by our newscaster, antibodies are very specific. They describe and target one particular antigen or foreign substance. If our bodies need to know about a different antigen, New antibodies, or reports, are created specifically for and target only that antigen. Also, just like the reports given by our newscaster, once reported, antibodies stay with us and act as a memory, like the public remembering the physical description of the bad guy. They never go away. Once an antigen is targeted by antibodies, a different white blood cell, called a T cell, acts as the cop in our scenario. Once antibodies latch onto the antigen, 
They then send out a signal that the T cells pick up. T cells use those signals to locate the antigen and destroy it. If all of this seems a little confusing, that's okay. It is. Here is a recap of the main terms I have covered. Our immune system is a network of organs, tissues, and cells we are born with that work together to protect our bodies against sickness. An acquired immune system is developed when our bodies see a new bacteria or virus and learn how to fight it. An antigen is a substance foreign to our bodies. The term antigen is used to describe an invading bacteria or virus. An antibody is a report or description of an antigen used to target the bad guy. Antibodies lock on to antigens and alert our immune system to an invasion. B cells are a type of white blood cell that produces antibodies. If a B cell has seen an antigen once, it will quickly and immediately begin making antibodies or putting out reports for that antigen if it ever sees it again. T cells are another type of white blood cell that acts as the cops. Once alerted to an invasion by antibodies, T cells use the antibodies to find and destroy invading antigens. So why should you know all of this in the first place? How does understanding the workings of an acquired immune system help you out in everyday life? Think back to the beginning of our lesson and how you would react to seeing a deadly stranger you did not recognize versus seeing a deadly stranger you had been warned about. You are much more likely to survive and come away unharmed from an encounter with that deadly stranger if you recognize him ahead of time and can mount a sufficient defense against him. It is the same with our immune system. If our body has seen a deadly bacteria or virus before, it is better prepared to fight it off and keep us healthy. This is exactly why vaccinations are so very important. I can hear the groans now. Nobody likes to get shots on a regular basis. I know I don't. But what I do like having is a body able to defend itself against harmful or deadly diseases like polio, measles, or our most famous bad guy, the flu. Remember our mass murderer who kills between 3,000 and 49,000 people each year? That guy actually exists, and his name is influenza, the common flu virus. How do vaccinations work to improve our acquired immune system? Introducing a bacteria or virus that is normally very harmful to our bodies in a less harmful or watered-down version still stimulates the production of antibodies against that particular antigen. Seeing this antigen just once amplifies the immune system response. And by immune system response I am talking about B cells and T cells doing their jobs. If the, if the antigen is ever encountered again, killing off the antigen and preventing us from getting seriously sick. If vaccinations are not given, the body is unprepared to fight an unrecognized antigen. We walk right past the deadly stranger. In this case, our immune system response will be weak and our bodily systems are more likely to be overwhelmed, resulting in death or serious illness. So let's drive it home. The goal of building up an acquired immune system is to prevent damage to our body and maximize damage to invading bacteria or viruses as quickly as possible, enhancing our chances of survival. We do this by getting vaccinations. In other words, we introduce a weak form of a normally very strong, very dangerous antigen to our immune system. Specialized cells recognize an invasion has begun and alert our B cells. B cells then begin creating antibodies which latch on to the bacteria or virus and alert T cells to swoop in and destroy the invader. Antibodies to a particular antigen stay in our body 
and assist in a stronger immune response if the antigen is ever encountered again. We recognize the deadly stranger. Thank you very much for your time.